Senator Hansen. Thank you very much. Well, I want to talk today about a few facts that needs to be um, cleared up. Now, yesterday on the floor of Parliament, Senator Jackie Lambie made, Lambie made comments in a speech with regards to, to the vaccination that One Nation is doing it for money and power. This is as far from the truth as it possibly could be. Our stance is about the rights of the Australian people to have a choice, a choice of whether they actually get the vaccination or not. Many Australians have been forced to have this vaccination against their will in order to keep their jobs. That is the fact. Also, Senator Roberts and I would have a highly regarded for our integrity and our honesty. Through, Jack, Mr, um, through Senator Lambie's comments, she's also made a statement yesterday that we released One Nation, Senator Roberts released her phone number. Well, let me just state the facts because the media aren't prepared to do it. And also, um, it was stated that we released her private number. Well, it's not the case. You see, that was, number was put out on a letterhead in 2014. That number was used in a Facebook page post on April the 17th and April the 19th, posted by her on her Facebook, calling for people to contact her on that number in order to put signage up in their house yards. That was a public number. It was a number that she used to tell a constituent that she totally opposed COVID vaccinations. It was a matter of choice. Well, what a flip-flop she's done, because that's not exactly what she said on the floor of Parliament yesterday. So she's telling her constituents something t different in Tasmania to what she says in the Canberra bubble. So I believe that Ms. Senator Lambie has misled Parliament, and I won't wear it because I will not be accused or allow Senator Roberts for an untruth to be told. And I expect the media to get their act together and print the truth and put, tell the people exactly what happened. I of all people, I understand the privacy of a phone number because I've been through a hell of a lot more over the years than what Senator Jackie Lambie has been done. And I see this as nothing as crocodile tears and having a go at One Nation again. And I won't stand for it. What happened yesterday, I'm disgusted with Senator Wong and Senator Birmingham because I believe it was colluded to allow her the time to actually make her statement. We had no idea what was happening. And there, we were actually try they tried to deny us access to actually respond to this so it was stated on the floor of parliament. Although I've got to say that Senator Birmingham did um, allow um, and he got the case across for Senator Roberts to have a stay, but that's not what they wanted. They wanted to try and discredit us. Let me also now go to about the COVID. Now, yesterday, the public saw the rantings of, um, uh, can, um, I, I've got to say, um, going back to the Facebook page with Senator Lambie, and it's very important for people to know this. She put her speech up on her Facebook page. She's got over 17,500 comments. And isn't it interesting? About 85 to 90% of the people are absolutely disgusted and call her statement as unhinged and childish. Not my words, their words, but I can't disagree with them. But then again, one post said, absolutely saddened by your display today, Senator Jackie Lambie, could just, um, just, you just showed how divisive, hypocritical and prejudiced you really are. That's only one post. I suggest people go and have a look at the post because people are absolutely furious about their rights being taken away from them. And who doesn't understand this whole debate? I would say is Senator Jackie Lambie when she talks about choice. And I will inform her, people are not given a choice. People are denied the right to work. They're losing their jobs, losing their businesses, 
They can't go in the health profession. These are the heroes of last year that were patted on the back for the work they did, unvaccinated, mind you, but now they can't. Let me also go to now a medical health centre um, in South Australia. It says we'll, it will continue to offer our services to patients who are, who are fully vaccinated. But it says those patients who are not vaccinated will need to book a phone consult and pay a gap different of $20. So, you know, doesn't matter what your health issue is, you, you possibly need to see a doctor, but don't come near us. You're not vaccinated. This is the vice of in our, in our society. Let me also go to the fact, and I would like to congratulate and thank those senators um, on the floor of parliament who supported my bill. Senator Sam McMahon, Senator Connie Ver Veravanti Wells, <clears throat> Senator Rennick, Senator um, Antic, and um, Senator Matt Canavan. Thank you very much for your support and your common sense in standing up for the rights of the Australian people. But let me also tell you now of oh, Keneally's rant that went on the floor of Parliament and carrying on. Guess what? She didn't even vote. No vote recorded. She didn't put in her, her money where her mouth was, is it? Did she? And also, I'd like to tell Queenslanders that Senators Amanda Stoker and Senator James McGrath were there. They didn't vote. So where's their stance on this? And they're both up for re-election. I'd like to... Um, Senator Rennick made in his speech a statement that doctors are being... Um, told that they can't um, talk anything that's divisive or anti-vax or whatsoever. And he was uh, ridiculed in the Brisbane Times article by APRA chief, APRA chief Martin Fletcher stating, oh, well, that's not really true, um, saying the agency did not have the power to do register health professionals and adding that its vaccine stance was in line with that of the government. That may be true. But then again, if you read their paperwork, which I have here, and it states here that practitioners must be careful not to discourage their patient or client from seeking vaccination. Practitioners authorised to prescribe and or administer vaccine, but who have a con conscientious objection must ensure appropriate referral options are provided for vaccination. So if you can't give it, give it to someone else who is going to give it to them, regardless of doctor patient. And then we go on to say here, any promotion of anti-vaccination statements or health advice which contradicts the best available scientific evidence from who? What scientists? Are we listening to all sides? No, we're not because they shut down. Or seeks to actively undermine the national immunisation campaign. This is what the politicians want for you, including via social media. It's not supported by national boards and may be in breach of the codes of conduct and subject to investigation and possibly regulatory action. So that means that it states that they will be actually fined or in fear of losing their licenses. Why do you think these doctors are in fear of coming out? They will tell us personally behind the scenes, but they don't want to lose their licenses that they work so hard for to work in the best interest of the public, but they're shut down to have an opinion over all this. That is disgraceful that this is allowed to happen. You're covering Covering up. Let's the true science be said. I would like to read now just a, a short thing from um, Nick Cater that was put in, and he's talking about the number of people infected in the past four months of the pandemic in Victoria is four times larger than the number infected in the last 14 months. Neither have vaccines provided the immunity from infection we were led to expect. It provides personal protection against severe illness but will not slow the spread or remove the risk of death altogether. Victorian health authorities remain coy about how many of the 330 people in intensive care were double vaccinated, but the data from more open jurisdictions such as Britain suggests many of them are. The same data also suggests vaccinated people are more likely to spread the virus than the unvaccinated because they might be asymptomatic and not know they have it. The exclusion of the unvaccinated from public places is untenable. 
on public health grounds unless the object is deterrence through humiliation. That's what we're up against. And I say to the members of parliament, go and get your facts, know what you're talking about, stand up for the rights of the Australian people, and we actually have to find the answers, but don't deny them the right to their freedoms to choose, and don't stop them from working in this nation, open, wanting to open up the borders, allow millions to come into the country to take their jobs. Senator McGrath. 